What is up, Moment Family? It's your boy, Joshua Martin. Today, as you read in the title, we're going to be talking about the five Final Cut Pro plugins that I use. Okay. Final Cut Pro is different, a little bit different in LE when it comes to being robust right out the gate, right out the box as soon as you purchase it, uh, compared to DaVinci Resolve and Premiere. Now that sounds like a, a like a loss, and it depends how you look at it. Early on, I thought that was a loss too. I bought this program back in 2010 when it first when it first came out with like Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, it was crazy, 10 years ago. Wow. Um, but I've been on and off the program and the platform. And reason being, Final Cut Pro embraces the plugin community, the plugin culture, I guess you can say. Of course, you can still get plugins from the other platforms, but I would say Final Cut Pro kind of needs it <laughs> to run properly. Now some of the upsides of Final Cut Pro versus the other ones is the speed. It is optimized for the Mac. Um, render speeds, export speeds are just tremendously faster than Premiere. DaVinci is like right behind it, but this is this is the cream of the crop when you're trying to cream of the crop. This is the cream of the crop when you're trying to edit and have a, a faster workflow. That's one of the reasons why I switched back to it because I had an older Mac and I needed something a little bit more optimized to get through 6K footage, um, things like that to render speeds and all that jazz. So actually, let me back, back, back track. Let's talk a little about how you get certain plugins into Final Cut Pro. And then this is where you can, once you download other plugins and stuff like that, text editors, graphic editors, audio, all that jazz, you can just drop them in here and it will populate in Final Cut Pro. So as you see here under titles, I have my adjustment layers, I have uh, Factory Pro, we're gonna talk about today. Um, we have Motion VFX, uh, we have uh, some other stuff down here that we're actually going to talk about. So that being said, that's how you get things into your Final Cut Pro. Adjustment layers are a non-destructive way to edit uh, multiple clips, especially when they're in like the same environment. In this case, I'm talking about color grade. You can add other things to adjustment layers um, if you need to. But in this case, we're talking about color grading. And um, let's say I have multiple clips that are in generally the same light and I don't want to drop in each individual clip to edit. So I'm just going to just drop a uh, adjustment layer. And so if you navigate to your effects tab and then under titles, it's going to be once you download it, if you download it, it's going to be adjustment layers there. And don't worry about the long, short, medium. They're all the same. You can always extend it. So anyway, I'm going to drop it onto my timeline. It's already here. And these clips are from my Z cam. This is a project I've been working on since the summer, still editing it. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna drop it on top. And then just like that, all of these clips are graded just because I added the uh, adjustment layer on top. And now I can do any and all adjustments from the top layer. And if I need to do fine adjustments to each clip, I just go to each clip. And that's really what it is. And that's I think that's a very powerful thing to have in Final Cut Pro because uh, you had it in Premiere, you have it in DaVinci, and this is a much more effective way to work in your workflow. Okay, the next plugin I'm gonna show you is one of my favorite um, graphic artists, visual artists. Uh, his name is Ezra Conan. Um, he does like a, a lot of production uh, visual, uh, visual graphics, and he has a ton of just cool mats and text. Now he doesn't necessarily make things for Final Cut Pro, but there are some of the files that work in Final Cut Pro. But um, I highly recommend check out his website. Just fantastic quality, quality uh, graphics to just pull. Anyway, we are going to be talking about his text editor. But if we go down to text animator, uh, once you get this pack, he has uh, Flickr, he has uh, letter by letter, line by line, typewriter and word, very simple. You can always just freely customize. These are very basic. And all you have to do is drag and drop it on top of whatever you're editing. And simply <laughs> there it is. And so you can change the font, you can change the size, anything, everything you need, you can figure out. Uh, it's right there and I like to use this a lot just for like my text editor and it's super clean super simple and I really really like it and they're quite adjustable you can adjust the, sp the spread of it the speed of it the flicker of it the animation in animation out so there's a lot of options there 
to customize it to how you want. You can even, you know, double it up. You get a, maybe find a text that has an outline and then um, do a little bit bigger than that. And then, you know, you can, you can do whatever you need. Like, that's, that could be dope, right? Now I've been using motion view effects for the last four years. Um, and they have a ton of options to download when it comes to color grading. You can get their own like LUT pack thingy. It's okay, I wouldn't do it. Um, but uh, they have text animators, lower thirds, graphic animators, uh, heads up displays. They have a slew of things dedicated for Final Cut Pro. So I would highly recommend jumping on this company just to see what they have. And they also have other things for other platforms as well. Um, oh, even DaVinci, I did not know that. Anyway, and I use these a lot when I was working at Notre Dame <laughs> or when I was working at different universities just because I needed something quite. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Yeah, and I, I like to find stuff, plugins for my like YouTube callouts or lower thirds or intro graphics. Um, there's a ton of stuff you can find in here. So I like just having this on hand. So when I'm doing like freelance work, I'll have different options to um, build a design over or I'll kind of look at what they have to offer to purchase uh, for the client. So that's what I like to use. I'm just, let me just drop this down over here and you can kind of see how let that play out. Simple animation in, simple, simple animation out. So there you go. Now this is a very useful plugin. I recently found this about a month ago and it's called FX Factory. They actually have a lot of plugins, but the two plugins that I've recently picked up, the Levelomatic and the uh, Noise Reduction. Uh, just because the compressor in Final Cut Pro is good, but I'm not an audio guy and I know the basics, but I wanted something quite more simple and, and, and much more effective. And so um, getting the right levels uh, especially like when you're doing talking heads like this, uh, you don't want something too low. I, I've been guilty of that, like my audio will be a little bit too low and sometimes my music will be too high. So this is basically going to help you level out, level out your tones, level out your levels, level out your levels. So what I want to show you, let's see, let's play this a little bit. Over the place, forgive me for that. Um, but yeah, continue to share with us. <laughs> it's so funny hearing myself on here. Twitter, we love that stuff. Okay, so if you notice one thing, look at how my audio levels yeah, are around negative six to negative 12. And that's okay. Well, actually, sure it's dipping between negative 12 and negative 20. And that's a little bit too low. Um, typically, a rule of thumb, you want to be between decently like negative uh, six and 12, a little bit over six. Um, so you don't always have to like turn out your volume and turn it down, turn it out when you're when you're talking. And also, this plugin allows the quieter um, bits of your audio to be a little bit boosted to match the higher ones. And the higher ones are going to come down. So it's going to again level it out a little bit more, so it can be a little bit more consistent. Um, and I do a, a lot of highs and lows when I talk. It's it's a nightmare. I anybody editing my voice, luckily I'm just doing it myself. But man, it is a nightmare. I gotta work on that. Get some Morgan Freeman training, you know? Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman, Morgan. Morgan Freeman. Um, so let's bring in, let's get rid of what, whatever editing I did to this. Let's go to Crumple Pop. That's what it's gonna be called. All right, so let's go to Levelmatic, right? So you just drag this over and nothing will happen. So you have to go over into your inspector and click on the editor for it. And then this will pop up. Let's, uh, let's get rid of that. So I'm gonna bring this over here so you can see. So by default, it's turned off. Again, let's give it a listen. It's gonna be really low. See my audio is around 20, negative 20 dBs. Not great, All right? So let's turn this on. Um, default strength is gonna be 80%. So let's bring this back. It's gonna be a little bit too aggressive. Let's just bring this back to 50 just to, to start. Um, and then I want my target uh, decibels output. I want that to be, to sit at six. Let's just do negative six and see what that puts us, all right? All right, let's give it a playback. But yeah, continue to share with us some of the content that you guys are making, especially on Twitter. We love that stuff. Not bad, I can actually just, let me just bump this all the way up to zero. 
and that should compensate coming out. But yeah, continue to share with us some of the content that you guys are making, especially on Twitter. We love that stuff. So I think that's, I think it's a very useful tool just because one, it doesn't distort when it's trying to raise the game or and lower it. It's, it's really no distortion. It keeps a nice quality sound, especially if your sound is good starting off. It just keeps it together and there's no extra distortion or anything like that. Every time I was editing audio in here, I always felt like I was just destroying it. But this is a nice medium. It's uh, it's not as aggressive um, and it's pretty awesome. Okay, bonus one. Again, this is with factory FX, FX factory. There's a denoiser. Now the denoiser in Final Cut Pro is absolutely trash, garbage. Nah, just don't use it. So they have one. This is, this is another $100. Um, you just drop it on top. Now this one, I still have to you know massage a little bit more. But um, again, if you wanna, I think it's a really good option aside from the default one in Final Cut Pro. And what I wanna talk about is um, uh, Filmic Pro. Filmic Pro is a fantastic, um, I like to use that as a finesser when it comes to color grading. Um, gives life, a little bit more life and texture to your footage. Um, if you first time he hearing about it, check head over to the website. They support a lot of different cameras. And basically you can add uh, film, em film emulators to your video to give a uh, more filmic look. Hence the name, Film Convert. So we're gonna do the same thing before, but since it's just a since this is just an individual clip, I'm just gonna just drop my Z Cam color tool on top. And what's what I like about this tool, you can totally just change everything you need to get it right, but we're gonna keep it basic. <laughs> Whatever it just did, we're gonna leave it. Um, am I still recording? Good. Okay. And so I'm going to go to uh, film emulator that's where film convert is this is film convert nitrate their newest update so I'm gonna go down here like I said I like to use this I haven't color graded anything directly from film convert nitrate but I have used it to, to finish off my color grade that makes sense right uh, so what you had to do you had to download your profile to whatever you're using um, in this case the Zcam e2s6 there we go. And we're gonna keep it Z-Log 2. That's the flat profile. Now it looks super crunchy, it looks terrible. But again, we can finesse. Um, I'm gonna do Portrait 400, Kodak Portrait, Portrait 400. And we're gonna just bring these down. This is the intensity of the film color, right? So I'm going to just go a little bit up there. This is, this is just me for an example. I'm gonna bring up exposure a little bit. I'm gonna just change, I'm gonna a little bit of blue, right? Um, tent. I like a little green in my in my shots. Grain. You can kind of see here. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys to see. There you go with the grain there. Let's just let's just go ham on it, right? Let's go in. Um, and then you have different choices to. Whew, oh wow. Uh, super 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 eight film, sixteen mil film. Let's just keep a full frame 35. That looks that looks the best. And again, you have some grain curves here. You can you can adjust. Then you have your color wheels here. You can adjust. So I'm just going to just leave that as is. Now the second wave of adjustment is the mixing tool. Now I typically just bring this down about halfway because I want it to be subtle. Um, in this case, that's my taste for a lot of things. A little bit of subtlety, right? So let's go to 55. And so now you can see on and so this is off. This is on, this is off, this is on. And it just, it just makes it a little bit more, of course you can, I can dive in a little bit more, get to the right texture that I want. But I like using this as a finesse. This is what I'm gonna be doing to all these clips from this dance film. And yeah, cool. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this run through of plugins that I use. Um, feel free to drop in in the comments the plugins that you use if you're a Final Cut Pro user. And even if you're DaVinci or uh, Premiere, uh, I'm sure most of these um, plugin third-party companies allow different platforms to be used, right? So drop, drop them in the comments below. Make sure to check out our shop and stay tuned for more tutorials. What do you guys want to see next, right? All right, let me know. Peace.